Hello, I'm Jim Grant, and do I have a treat for you? Since 1975, the Pope has visited 11 times with youth from all over the world in different cities. As recently as at the end of July 2013 in Rio de Janeiro. It was a wonderful experience, and we have brought into our studio today some of those pilgrims who are back from that trip with all of their friends. 54 went from our diocese, and we're going to hear from them now the beautiful experience they had with all of their fellow pilgrims. Stay tuned. Hello, it's my privilege to share with you the excitement of young pilgrims just back from Rio de Janeiro, where they spent two weeks spending time with each other and with two million friends from all across the world. The ones who are here today to share with us their faith and their experience would be Juan Angel Busto Ramirez, Evelyn Hernandez, Ricky Salinas, Carolina Alejandre, Gerardo Madrigal, and Melody Montoya. They come from different parishes in our diocese, from different schools, and they have all met at this wonderful experience of faith in Brazil. I'd like to give them a chance to begin, if they could, with an opening thought about an opening reflection, something that is in your heart that is the basis of what the experience was in Rio. Would any of you like to begin sharing what that was like? It was an awesome experience, something that you have to be there to experience. You have to give up certain things to gain others, um, but it's a once in a life opportunity. And if you, t if you were to take it, you know how great it was to be with other people. I don't think there's any event like this, this one, uh, World Youth Day. The crowd that was at, um, that was at uh, Copacabana, like it's bigger than the World Cup or the crowd that's gonna be at the Olympics, I think. Because it's just amazing to see all these countries from all around the world united under Christ, despite their differences. That's the beauty of World Youth Day. And once you're there, you can completely see what the Catholic Church really is. The universality, the what universal church, that's what it is. The universal church, all those flags, all those people, um, just united in fellowship and gathering together to celebrate the Eucharist and be with our Holy Father. It's just an awesome experience. Uh, I have to, like, going off of what they said, it's definitely a once in a lifetime opportunity. And even though you're only visiting one country, the whole world is there. And so I mean, you see everything. So it's definitely a once in a lifetime opportunity, unless you get to go to it more than once. So. And that would bring up Melody. Yes. Um, this is my third World Youth Day, and it's very nice um, having the opportunity to share my time and my love of the Catholic faith with um, young adults, and it's, it's just very nice to see them um, just engaged in, in their faith and share their Eucharist with other um, individuals, Brazilians, um, and other people from around the world. It's a pleasure, actually. Now, one word we want to put on the table and have you identify with it is that you're pilgrims. You are not just adventurers, you're not just young kids on a spring break. What was that experience like regarding pilgrimage? For one thing, you know, I mean, there were so many Catholics there and we were all there as pilgrims, but even people that weren't Catholic or even pilgrims, um, one example is when we were, everyone was just so welcoming and even those who weren't um, Catholic were welcoming. Like, one example is when we were in Sao Paulo, Evan and I got stuck on a, with our group, we got stuck on a train that broke down because it was so full of pilgrims. And um, we befriended this random Brazilian who didn't speak any English or Spanish, so it was a m broken language, just trying to converse with each other. And um, he helped us out, and he um, definitely told, like, he helped us out, told us not to get off at that station because it was too dangerous to just wait it out. And then two days later, he came and he found us, and we found, and he took us on a tour of Rio, and we found out that he wasn't Catholic, but th because he saw that we were pilgrims, he wanted just to get to know us better. So he came, he found us at the parish we were staying at in Rio, and he gave us a tour. So I think that was one thing, just uh, how open and welcoming everyone was, whether they were Catholic or not. One thing that I thought was interesting is I, I honestly believe like every, every human reflects one specific, um, you know, face of God, you know what I mean? They, they are a unique creation of God, and, and no other person will be able to reflect 
love and light the way that they do. And I think uh, going through this pilgrimage, you meet a lot of people. You get like um, a different perspective to, to your life, to your culture, and it really it, it makes you think about your own life and appreciate so much that we have. Um, speaking on pilgrimage, and this is something Gerardo and I talked about. Um, we went on this pilgrimage to Brazil, but life is a pilgrimage. We are pilgrims in this world, and it, this isn't our home, you know? We, we belong somewhere else. This is not where I belong. It's, we, our ultimate home is heaven. That's where we belong. And so this entire, our entire life is a pilgrimage. So going on this, this specific pilgrimage to World Youth Day to Brazil, just, it totally hits you, you know, like, this isn't where you belong, you're meant for something greater. I wonder if Gerardo or um, Melody, who will be replaced in our next panel, have any final thought they'd like to share before we take our break about the experience for them and for the others in their group? Um, for my group, I, I know um, many of my, the individuals that came from our parish, it was their first time traveling out of the Reetley area, and for them, they, um, they experienced the best, the most amazing opportunity in their life. I could tell by the tears in their eyes, by the way they were interacting with others, they were very excited. And I'm very happy that I was able to lead um, a group from our small community and help them um, see beyond Reedley in the Central Valley and experience their Catholic faith with others from around the world. So I'm, I, I love, this is my third um, World Youth Day and I'm very honored and privileged. And um, actually, Juan An Angel's mom asked me, um, are you going to go to the next World Youth Day? And I said, yes, God willing, I will be going and taking Super. a group of pilgrims. And that'll be to Krakow. Yes. Awesome. Gerardo, um, tell us a little bit about you and how you decided to go on pilgrimage and what difference it's going to make in your life. Well, this is actually my second World Youth Day. I had the opportunity to go to Madrid uh, last time there was a World Youth Day event. And um, I can definitely say there's been some differences. I, uh, this is my first World Youth Day on a beach. And that was kind of a different experience. <laughs> we all kind of had to cope with the weather situation, how there was a, a change from where the, the visual was going to be. And um, I guess we all took it very well. I mean, because, you know, you, as a pilgrim, you kind of just have to take things as you come, you know. You really would like things to be different, but it's just a great opportunity for growth spiritually and, you know, as a human being. I really enjoyed my time. And, you know, the fellowship part, um, we, I got to know a lot of people from this diocese, and I think that's important for there to be unity within, you know, the diocese. Do you have one hope based on your experience that you'd like to share, um, any one of you, about what you learn that you could like to translate into a positive action because the Pope, if anything, called for action. Three words. Go, be not afraid, serve. Dear young friends, as you return to your homes, do not be afraid to be generous with Christ, to bear witness to his gospel. In the first reading, when God sends the prophet Jeremiah, he gives him the power to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. It's the same for you. Bringing the gospel is bringing God's power to pluck up and break down evil and violence, to destroy and overthrow the barriers of selfishness, intolerance and hatred, so as to build a new world. Dear young people, Jesus Christ is counting on you. The church is counting on you. The Pope is counting on you. Did you um, pick up that challenge? Well, the thing is, when we went to uh, Brazil, seeing the people there was like one of the most amazing things I'd ever experienced. And how, the way their culture is, how they're, they're so rich and loving and humble, they just open up themselves up to us and like, even though we're complete strangers from around the world. And what I would like to do, yeah, I'd like to take that culture back into our, like, our diocese and hopefully spread it around because so, like, 
I just love to have that experience here and like make everybody more loving like them. Anyone else? Yeah, um, at Memorial, during my time at Memorial, I was kind of involved in some of the campus ministry life and um, we did retreats and uh, m music ministry and things like that. And um, I had kind of thought once I graduated from Memorial, that was it, I was done. I didn't think I'd, I'd be doing any more of that because I'm going to college now, it's going to be a lot different, I'm not going to have time. But after going to World Youth Day, you know, and that challenge and the theme was go and make disciples of all of my people, that's something that like, you can take to heart and it's like, I don't know what's gonna, what, they have, what they're going to have in my college at UC Santa Cruz, but um, if there's nothing there, then why can't I can definitely start something. So things like that, just staying involved all the time and some sort of ministry work, is, that's kind of the message I got. Like, you can't just stop. You have to keep going. So. Speaking of getting going or keeping going, um, we have to take our little break right now, but we are going to be back and actually have two other pilgrims share their experience. We hope you're enjoying this visit with the pilgrims of the Diocese of Fresno, fresh back from Rio de Janeiro and their visit with Pope Francis. So how close I went to the, I was to the Pope. I have the privilege to be at the cathedral and can celebrate the mass with uh, 4,000 priests because we were like 12,000 priests, but I was one of the chosen ones to be close to him. So in the end of the mass, he was coming out from the sacristy, and I get closer and closer. I was close to say to greet him when somebody pushed me, and then I touched his shoulder. Once I was there, I just touched his face like this. He smiled and blessed me, and I think that is just awesome. KNXC thanks all its loyal viewers and respected businesses who have supported your Catholic television station. Now you can support KNXT with program underwriting by having your name, your company's name, or organization associated with your favorite program. Detailed information about you or your company will appear before and after each program or day part you select. Keep the quality and spiritual message alive and make a difference. Call 559-488-7440 today or go online at knxt.tv to find out more about program underwriting on KNXT. Um, I would say the most inspiring thing that Pope Francis did while we were in Rio was he smiled. He smiled to all and he went out to the poor, which I'm sorry for getting emotional, but it's the inspiration that he gave us to go out to all nations and make disciples of everyone. No matter where he steps in every neighborhood, whether it's the poor or the rich, but take the Lord's word and spread it. Welcome back to our visit with our visitors of our um, diocese pilgrims who just came back from Rio. They were there with actually, I've heard, three and a half million of their friends visiting with the Pope. And I'd like to introduce them to you again so you'll know who these great people are. We have Juan Angel Busto Ramirez from Selma, from St. Joseph's. Evelyn Hernandez and Ricky, who are also from OLPH. Ricky being a student at San Joaquin Memorial. We've got three from St. Jude Livingston, and that would be Carolina, we have Maggie, and we have Berenice, who are here from a large group that came down from Livingston to share today their experience of being in Rio de Janeiro. Where we left off was talking about being a pilgrim. Now I'd like to have you all share a little bit about what it's like, the fellowship that gets created on a pilgrimage. What is it that you can share about exactly the effect caused by faith being celebrated by a large group of people that are committed to something and being led by a unique leader like our own Pope Francis? Who would like to start that conversation? Um, well, just strictly the, us from California, um, most of us, we didn't really know each other like we said earlier. and. Um, Half of the time we didn't know what was going on, so we were just kind of having you know, to go with the flow of things and don't ask questions, just do what we're told, things like that. Um, but not, not in a mean way, you know. And um, I think when you go through something like that, whether it be like the harsh weathers that we had or, you know, sleeping outside, things like that, you definitely bond, especially when going there we didn't really know each other that well. Now you make friendships. We've made friendships that you probably that are never going to end. They're always going to... I'm always going to be able to see Evelyn and be like, hey, how's it going, things like that. 
So um, I think from that standpoint, just us from California especially, there was definitely a bond made that can't be broken. Um, I think there's a bond made not only with our fellow pilgrims from our diocese, but with our host parish. Uh, we had the awesome opportunity to stay with um, St. Sao Joachim um, Parish in Sao Paulo, and we were welcomed tremendously by the youth group and by the, the adults of the parish and the priest. And um, after four days, as we were leaving to Rio, everyone was sobbing, uh, everyone was in tears. We didn't want to leave because we had such an awesome bond with them. And I asked myself, how is that possible? We've only known these people for four days. <laughs> um, but it's, it's testament to the fact that we are one body. We are one body in Christ. And though we speak totally different languages and we eat totally different food and we live like on the total like different side of the planet, um, <laughs> we have the most important thing in common, and that's love of Christ and love of his church. And Thank that's just you, awesome. Maggie. Anyone else about the bonds that you see, not only, let's say, locally and with the people in Sao Paulo, what about fellow pilgrims, sister pilgrims from, did you get to meet, hopefully, others from across the globe? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, Berenice. Well, on the train on our way back home in Rio, um, it's a, it was a long ride, like a 30-minute drive from there to, from the metro to back home to where we were staying. Um, we got to meet, me and um, another friend that's not here right now, got to meet um, like three girls that were from Argentina, and one of them was actually um, confirmed by the Pope, and oh, nice. that was super cool for me. I was like... We, we're we friends now on Facebook, like you said, you become <laughs> friends and like I feel like much more connected like through her to the Pope because you know, mm -hmm. someone who knew him and got confirmed by him, it was super awesome. You get to meet a lot of new people. Okay, speaking of fellowship, let's say fellowship with the Pope. Uh, who <coughs> felt that they did either get close enough or got a real idea of this Pope physically, intimately, who had the best connection with the Pope? Uh, I remember when I was um, when I was standing like four, ten, five feet away from him. I really felt <laughs> like I was standing three hours straight, waiting for him in the Pope Mobile to pass by. And even though he was surrounded by security and like <coughs> his Pope Mobile was going really fast, <laughs> and his back was turned towards me, <laughs> like you could still feel the holiness and emanating from him like he's just an amazing person that like, even non-catholics adore like you just feel his presence even when he wasn't he hadn't even landed in Copacabana you just feel he's in Brazil like that's an insane thing it's amazing um, the first night that he arrived at Copacabana I got there early with my group and we waited in the beach we got there like at 10 in the morning. He wasn't supposed to show up till 7 p.m. So we waited a long time and it was raining and it was really crowded. And even though we got there early, we were still about 100 yards away from where he was. And I'd heard him speak before on TV and things like that. But this was the first time where he was there, where I could see him, even though he was tiny, I could mm -hmm. see him there. And I could also see him on the screen if I wanted to. And I remember when he finally arrived and he started speaking, one of the first things he said, well, he was thanking us for, for bearing through the weather and things like that. And he said something, it was in Spanish or Portuguese or a mix of the two that he said it. Basically, he said, by, by being here, you guys have proven that the youth, the faith of the youth is stronger than any weather. And everyone went crazy because it had been, it had been cold, it had been raining. And at that moment, like when I heard that, it was just like an overwhelming sensation. It was like, he's our Pope. Like, it was such a, um, just... He sound, like, I know everyone says he's humble, just the way he sounded, you couldn't help but connect and feel like he's one of us. So it was definitely, as soon as I heard him say that, that was definitely the moment for me where I was like, wow. Yeah, going off of what everyone's saying, even though uh, the first time I wasn't so close because I was with him also, uh, the way that they introduce him, it's like he doesn't come with gold, he doesn't come with silver. It, he comes with all the love to share, and he comes to for us, for one reason. And it's amazing to see that everyone gather just for one reason, which is uh, to become closer in the Catholic faith and all the youth going 
um, it's just great to have that uh, connection because I saw so much charisma on him. It's his smile. It was just just to see him smile like I it, it overwhelmed me. You know, it, it was so much joy to just see him. It was such a happy experience. So glad, Evelyn. Now this happened in a particular country. It's Brazil. It's one of the great world powers. It might be the fifth largest economy in the planet. Tell us what it was like, the country, the food, the customs, the families, the community, especially the people. What was Brazil for you? Uh, I don't think words can even begin to express how amazing the people there are. They're well, how we stayed in La Parroquia de San Joaquin in uh, Cambosí, Sao Paulo, it was just amazing. They hadn't even known us, like, and they just op welcomed <coughs> us with open arms. And another thing is, like, they, some, by some mishap, they showed up at the airport a day before we got there. <laughs> that everything was ready, and they showed up a day before. <gasps> and even the next day when we came, they showed up and just welcomed us. They didn't even know us, like, they greeted us like as if they, we were their family. And I do feel that they, I always have a special place in my heart with them. Like they're so amazing. And like that's, we're all, it really shows how united we are through Christ. It's um, just amazing. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, one of the greatest things I think I learned um, during this World Youth Day pilgrimage was how to love. The people of Brazil really know how to love. And I don't think it's accident that our, our symbol is a heart, our, our official logo, because um, never in my life have I felt more welcomed, more oh, loved um, than, than being greeted at the airport by con complete strangers and then taking into their parish and my host family's home. They're so loving and they're, they know how to be hospitable, they know how to be welcoming, like Christ would be. Um, and they like to eat a lot. <laughs> Brazilians <laughs> eat a lot. Um, <coughs> The food is very similar to Mexican food. Um, there's lots of beans and rice, but it's still quite different. Um, yeah. And every day they just they would always feed us like very well. Like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry. Not so good. Um, one of the things like I think a lot of people I, I know I kind of felt this way. I was worried, you know, going to Brazil for the first time. Ooh, what are, they're going to be completely different than me. I'm not going to like have anything in common with them and really the only difference was just the language and even that like was easy to overcome after a while but like they they were just like us you know um, they liked the same things we liked um, we could randomly start singing Taylor Swift songs and they could join right in oh even those like American music things yeah, like that everything was the same they liked soccer they liked this and that um, they all had Facebooky the way they call it over <laughs> there things like that so um, I swear I added like 50 60 friends yeah. from there so I mean they're just like us, and it was, it was r really awesome to, to get to meet them. What about so. playing FIFA with them? Yeah, um, my host family, I had a, my, my host brother, he actually invited me one night up to his room, and he had FIFA, the, the soccer video game. And it was in Portuguese, and I didn't understand what it was saying, but it was FIFA, and I know how to play FIFA. So we played, you know, a few games up till 3 in the morning. And uh, <laughs> he ended up beating me. He had the winning record, but I did get a couple wins in there, so I mean... He's Brazilian, they're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Anything right. else about the experience? Um, you all say that Sao Paulo was really even more, in a sense, impressive than Rio, or what? Um, it was just a community. Like, in big events, you feel the love, you feel, you know, but you get to meet these people for a few seconds on the train or. Um, Sometimes you get lost, don't know where to go, and these random people just guide you through it, you know, because they're they're locals, you know. Um, but in in Sao Paulo, it was just different because of the community. We stayed with them the whole time, and it was just a lot of bonding that happened really fast. Um, we just felt like they're our brothers and sisters in Christ, and there was no doubt about that. I think that was a difference. But in Rio, there was a lot of fellowship as well. Um, 
one story, Carolina and I and our group, we went to the vocation fair mm -hmm. in Rio and we didn't know how to get there, but we just hopped on the metro and was praying, we're praying that <laughs> we would get there. <laughs> and um, some random cayocas, like the native Rio people, um, <laughs> that sounds so funny, but um, <laughs> they, they asked us where we were going and we told them and they're like, okay, let us show you. And like, they literally, it was raining and windy and everything and they're like here hold on like hold yeah, on to our shoulders our hands so we wouldn't get lost because <laughs> there's millions of people and they showed us and um, I actually brought um, a sample one of them gave me a little bottle of holy water um, and it was just awesome we took a picture with him he showed us like what metro to get back home and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff and everyone's just so welcoming and loving and I have one last question but may take a few minutes to answer we've got like four minutes I'd like you to share from the depths of your heart the most important thing you either saw or heard or experienced, the most important, and how that will change your life. I think Carolina could begin because her life is going to change on Monday with a mission. So tell us about that and then others can chip in. Um, before World Youth Day, I, like Gerardo had said earlier, we had the opportunity to go to World Youth Day Madrid. And there, I think I learned to embrace Catholic faith. Then I really felt like I had to go to this next World Youth Day. And, and this one was, it, it was going out, go make disciples of all nations. And before that, it, before, before going to World Youth Day, I was already preparing myself, you know, like the Pope had told us, prepare spiritually. And I felt called to leave all my plans behind and apply to this thing called NET Ministries, NET standing for National Evangelization Teams, and um, it was it was this strong drive to apply, and then I was accepted, and everything was just being laid in front of me. Went to World Youth Day and hearing the Pope's message of go, go out and and do it, you know. Um, evangelize then coming back home and saying okay you're gonna leave in four days you know it was just really overwhelming and going out and spreading that love to to everyone you meet you know just it can happen <laughs> thank yeah. you for sharing that Carolina mm -hmm. whom else uh, would like to share their little hope for what they're gonna do differently because of what the Pope and what the other three and a half million people did for you well for me, it was um, how to like share like my faith and religion. We had cate catechesis for three days, and one of the what bishops um, sh like told us how to like share our faith not, instead of like going out and oh read the Bible or you know do this or do that. He said to there was like four steps. I think um, one of them was to be humble, I believe. Um, another was to, uh, by charity, um, and another was, I forgot. Joyful. To, be joyful. to be joyful. There you go. And that's what the Brazilian people did. Is, and I believe that. For me, I, I, it was like difficult to like, sh like, I don't know, spread my faith and show it to others. And now with that, I know that I will just be myself and hopefully I touch someone's heart or you know they want to know God and and that's what the Brazilian people did and even the Pope you know go out and make disciples he's humble himself and well that's something I want to do what I have to do now is say thank you for being here today you pilgrims I hope we will support these young people with our own faith and help them to do what they are called to do to change the world God bless